Tommy here from Warner Systems. We're going to talk about the Tiny Pilot IP KVM right here. This is a clever little device. I really like Raspberry Pi projects. There's something just kind of fun about them. And I like IP KVM, but I've never liked a lot of the commercial offerings because a lot of them just didn't quite work as well as I thought they could. They were usually based on some type of weird Java application interface or proprietary browser and were kind of expensive. Now, this is a single KVM. So we're not talking about one that splits into many. So you're not going to take this one device and control 10 devices with it, or are you? And I bring that up because there is limited support and they do have a list, which I'll show where they do allow this to be plugged into like a four port HDMI KVM, a two port one or an eight port one here. And they have some limited compatibility with a couple of these. So this list is probably growing and this is what it looks like in April of 2021, but that list make it longer. We did test and it did work with this older IO gear two port one that we had, but it didn't work with our IO gear four port one. We're not really sure why it's kind of a mystery, but um, nonetheless, at least there's a couple of them on that list that maybe you have or can find for a relatively good price. But for our demo today, we're only hooking up to a single computer, specifically a laptop. So let's dive into the Tiny Pilot project. Now, full disclosure up front, this was sent to me by Michael of tinypilotkvm.com. And as they say right here, it is an easy to use, low cost device to manage your servers. You can access your server before it even boots. So yes, there's no problem going into the BIOS, the USB keyboard mouse combo that it emulates from the Raspberry Pi. It works perfectly fine in a BIOS. Lightning fast keyboard and mouse forwarding, fast high quality video capture. That's true too, no problem. 30 frames a second at 1280 by 720 with about 200 milliseconds of latency. All those things are true, but I wanted to kind of dive into a real world use case scenario. And what I mean by real world is I've restricted and I just logged in SSH in and did it as iperf. I restricted this all the way down to about 500 kilobits a second. By doing this, I've simulated what it might be like to manage this thing remotely. Now, I'm not going to really account for any latency you may have over remote. That's going to be varied. But assuming you have a normal connection without it too much latency, but maybe more bandwidth restriction over a VPN. That's what I wanted to demo this as. It definitely worked perfectly fine without any latency when you're doing it in real time on the same network. But I know the reality of it is, and where a lot of IT providers may be interested in a product like this, is managing those one-off devices our clients have or home labs that go, hey, I don't have IPMI on my motherboard or a lights out management system or an iDRAC system. So I wanna be able to manage these computers. You can do this. And of course, being able to do it remotely, that's even better. So here is what the tiny pilot looks like even over, and you can kind of see where I move the mouse and there's a slight delay, even over a 500 kilobit connection. So yes, it will, or at least should work perfectly fine in most VPN situations. Uh, the typing as well. So let's go ahead and type in notepad here. This is, oops, I backspace. You can see this is actually pretty usable. <laughs> Except for now I typed too many times backward. This is a test. So there's a little bit of lag with this level of bandwidth restriction. Of course, this would be even faster if you're dealing with something that's remotely a terminal. And, uh, you know, that's going to be probably a pretty likely scenario for us where we have a few clients with devices that, well, they only put out a basic terminal interface over VGA because they're older devices. This is kind of a cool way I'd be able to get access to and manage that. Now, let's talk about the VGA adapter. This I tested, I don't have it plugged into the laptop that I have kind of off to the side here we're doing the testing on, but uh, this has HDMI out, so HDMI in. But we did test a few devices with the VGA adapter that does include this IO gear because the only output on this happens to be VGA in and VGA out. It's an older device that we had in a box that we got out just for playing with. And when we connected it like this, it worked fine. I was actually uh, shocked at how well this works. Now, if you're wondering what the extra little USB cable is dangling here, that is because you do need to power converting VGA to HDMI. They are different protocols. So there's a chip in here that has to be powered up to convert and get them talking to each other. But hey, pretty clever that this exists so I can take something that's VGA, power it up, and plug this into usually the computer that I'm pulling from the VGA from to give this power. Now, how does the rest of this work? That's pretty easy. Here is the Tiny Pilot with the 3D printed case they provide. It says Tiny Pilot on the side. Well, well made, well machined. It is actively cooled with a fan, but don't worry. It uses such a little processor. It doesn't really seem to even get warm at all. This is the little power adapter that says Tiny Pilot on here. We have the data 
versus power in split. And if I wanted to power off the Pi, I could just do this. It only takes about a minute to boot up. Over on the other laptop, we just have the HDMI plugged into the HDMI port. And then we have the USB plugged in right here. They provided all the cables and everything in the kit when you order this. So everything's complete when you're buying these, which is nice. This is actually a nice feature of the Tiny Pilot and kind of how they are marketing this. So the project itself is open source. You can download all the source code or they offer a support model version and a turnkey version. And that's what this essentially is, is a kit. My heart is with all the people who are the DIYers and want to build everything themselves because I'm definitely doing that many times. Other times I want something that I can buy that solves a problem. And I love that it's based on open source, but it can be nice to have someone offering a turnkey solution because some people do not want to or do not have the time to invest in DIY. So I like the fact that they're catering to both markets with this product. And let's cover that really quick. So you can go to their website. Here is the Tiny Pilot Voyager, which is the one I have in front of me. If you go click on the details of that, you will be able to order that and uh, for 15 extra dollars, get the VGA module. They have a hobbyist kit. They have the Tiny Pilot power connector and they have the Tiny Pilot Pro license. The Pro license gives you updates and support. So if you wanted to get updates that work right through the browser, and I'm gonna show you how that works. Let's go back over to here. You go to system and we can say update. It'll see if there's a new version and see if there's an update available. That's part of the support package that comes with it. I think that's kind of a clever to build this all inclusive with a turnkey option like that. Then we go over here and say, what about changing the security on it? We go to security, require username and password. You're just a checkbox away. Out of the box, it already ships with HTTPS enabled for the remote access. Pretty straightforward, but I still recommend in terms of setting this up, if you were to deploy this at a client, you're probably going to want to put this over on a separate network that is, you know, your management VLAN and lock it down like anything else that, well, is a management platform for control of a network because this is giving you direct access keyboard and mouse to a system there. But of course, you can SSH in and change all the credentials and right through the web interface without any SSH access, you can go here and add a username and password to it. Um, of note, while we were testing here, it has no problems with multiple people at the same time logging in uh, and being on this system. So I thought that was actually kind of clever. I'll scroll down a little bit though. You can see you do have a full keyboard here. So if you want to do things like press alt control and delete, you can certainly do that and it'll send that command there. And same thing with any of the F keys, print lock, scroll lock, all the keys are available. Also has the option of going full screen. So doing this kind of gives you a nice instant full screen access to that particular system. And like I said, even with this restriction of low bandwidth on here, I'm actually just amazed at just how well this works and the frame rates it supports. Of note, and I will do this real quick, I'm going to unplug it and plug it back in and show you it jumps to different resolutions without a problem. So if we plug it back in again, you'll see it doesn't take any time at all. Here we go. And now I'm going to restart this computer. Power. Restart. And watch the resolution change even while it's plugged in without any problems at all. This is something that some KVMs will get stuck on, unfortunately, is waiting for the resolution change as long as you have the power cycle of KVM. I never had that be the case here. Um, going into a BIOS, going into this and connecting different machines, whatever the resolution is, it just seems to take it like a champ and reef. Yeah, adjust and away we go. So that, that part worked really, really well. And I will mention the elephant in the room. I have it in a tab over here. Other people say, what about the Pi KVM? Isn't that another project or is this a fork of that project? They are completely separate projects. Uh, I find it interesting. They're both fairly mature projects. The Pi KVM, for those of you that have probably already pointed this out in the comments, already has the CD-ROM and flash drive support. And that's something that is on the future to-do list for the Tiny Pilot KVM. Maybe by the time you watch this video, it's available, but it is a add-on feature they are working on to allow you to have images on here. So you could actually go into the BIOS, tell it mounts an image, it would emulate a CD-ROM and be able to, or a flash drive essentially, and be able to boot off of that image so you could remotely reload a system. But my overall on this, I really like the project. I like the fact that it's turnkey, complete, 
very simple to use and uh, I didn't even have to ask any questions to the developer when it came to support. They sent me a little sheet that had the username and password to SSH into this. Uh, the web interface by default comes completely unsecured. So I really recommend checking those boxes if you buy this kit as a project to secure it. But hey, from an ease of use uh, out of the box, it was really, really simple. Plugging in the VGA adapter and all that, no problems at all. It just, everything fired right up and worked. I also like that they provided these USB cables, the ones that are kind of like the FabriCraft ones because this feels like nice quality. Uh, nothing felt cheap. The case felt well made. Nothing is like uh, cheap feeling, I guess the best way I can describe it. So it feels like a good quality device that I hope will live for a long time. Of note, what would be really cool is not to have a fan in it though. And I bring that up just because, well, and obviously it's something you can change out yourself, but when you're using a fan, if you plan to put this at a client's and it plans to sit there for the next several years, monitoring some device or allowing remote access to said device, fans sometimes fail and uh, not having a fan would be that much better just have it passively cool other than that i do like the product and i'll leave a link to their website where if you're interested in buying one or just go to their github and download the project and load it on your own raspberry pi and play with it yourself all right thanks and thank you for making it to the end of this video if you enjoyed this content please give it a thumbs up if you'd like to see more content from this channel hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to hire a share project head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the hire us button right at the top to help this channel out in other ways, there's a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.